now uh, coming to the various types as i said there are various uh, types of nephrotic syndrome when we are talking about that the minimum change disease is the commonest uh, apart from that we have ssgs which is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis we have membrano proliferative and membranous uh, 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 nephrotic syndrome A apart from that Uh, since our topic is confined to nephrotic syndrome but remember there is another thing which is called as post streptococcal glomerular nephritis which is a nephritic range of protein urea the protein urea is not very high but that is another thing which is very common in pediatric age group but we will try to just have a little bit of look about a, the each type of common nephrotic syndrome which occurs in the children so primarily nephrotic syndrome when we talk about they are the minimum change disease the fsgs membrano proliferative and membranous glomerular nephritic syndrome the other are called as the secondary nephrotic syndrome which are because of the various diseases like autoimmune disease sle uh, diabetes um, uh, hodgkins lymphoma hiv uh, hepatitis b and c so i'll be talking to you about that so let us first look at the minimal change disease as i said minimal change disease is the commonest cause of nephrotic syndrome which almost account to around 77 to 85 almost till 90% of the all the cases which are associated with the nephrotic range of protein urea in children usually it is idiopathic as i said usually no cause is known but nowadays uh, after doing uh, multiple studies they are implicating the t cell induced uh, damage to the podocytes although it's not been proved beyond doubt right now it is still in the experimental stage so in this uh, condition you what we see is only the protein urea and uh, there is no associated hematuria there is no associated hypertension or no other disease process which is involved in the children uh, usually they respond very well to steroids and most of them they go in for remission after the first dose of the steroid used in the uh, i mean uh, uh, when we do the steroid treatment with the uh, in the children now in these cases if we do a, a, a kidney biopsy and uh, we uh, look it under the electron microscopy uh, the samples look normal there is no change the only change that we see is seen in the electron microscope where there is a mild effacement of the food processes and that is why it is called as minimal change disease where there is a very minimal changes which is seen in the disease process and if we do the immunofluorescence we don't see any immune uh, uh, deposits in the basement membrane or in the bowman's capsule so this is about the minimal change disease the other cause which is usually associated in children is uh, 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 called as focal segmental uh, glomerular sclerosis now this accounts for around 10 to 15% of the uh, cases of nephrotic syndrome so focal segmental glomerular sclerosis and minimal change disease together encompass around 95% of all the total nephrotic syndrome which occurs in the children again if you look at uh, this um, uh, disease they do tend to respond to uh, the steroids but they do tend to go in for the multiple relapses and there is a chance of these children going in for the end stage renal disease i'll be talking to you about the outcome little later when you do the electron microscopy usually it is normal what you see is only the mild scarring or sclerosis which is seen in the small segments which is scattered over the glomeruli that is why it is called as focal segmental glomerular sclerosis okay now this uh, in the initial stage will be only at the focal level in the uh, uh, glomeruli but as the disease progresses this can encompass the entire glomeruli and then it is called as global glomerular sclerosis and once the global uh, glomerular sclerosis occurs this can lead on to the tubular atrophy and this type of fsgs usually goes very rapidly towards the end stage renal disease or esrd now if you look at the electron microscopy apart from this uh, focal sclerosis you don't see anything else you see definitely Uh, just like your uh, uh, minimal change disease you will see a mild effacement of the food processes or the podocytes usually you do not see any uh, immune deposits in uh, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis as well usually again it is uh, uh, idiopathic but then it can be associated with hiv or the sickle cell disease uh, 
the other uh, 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 type of uh, nephrotic syndrome is called as membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis now this is uh, a more of a nephritic uh, type of uh, uh, syndrome where the protein urea may not be very high there might be an associated microscopic or a gross hematuria the child might have an hypertension associated with this and these uh, membrano proliferative disease Uh, is characterized by and uh, immunofluorescent uh, uh, stains which are seen so there is a deposit immune deposits which are seen in the basement membrane and it causes the thickening of the uh, basement membrane that is the proliferation of the basement membrane and hence the name membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis uh, 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 nephritis not very commonly seen in children it is more commonly seen in adult but uh, the uh, if the nephrotic syndrome is occurring beyond 10 years of age uh, then this uh, membrano proliferative glomerulus nephritis is probably one of the common type of nephrotic syndrome they might respond to steroids but most of them they require they are the frequent relapses and uh, they might require to be uh, uh, on the long term steroids or they might also require to be on the biologicals like cyclophosphamide or cycloserin uh, lincosamide etc they most of these cases do not have a very good prognosis they tend to go in for end stage renal disease uh, and they might require a renal replacement therapy later on the other common type is uh, membranous glomerulonephritis now this is a, a very few number of cases uh, in the pediatric age group Uh, which causes uh, which uh, have membranous glomerulonephritis this is probably the commonest type in adults but in pediatric age group it is very rare uh, just like your membrano proliferative disease here also there is a thickening of the basement membrane and you see a granular pattern um, uh, uh, as the immunofluorescent deposits the characteristic feature in membranous glomerulonephritis is if you look at the electron microscopy you will see what is called as spike and dome uh, appearance where there is a spike and then there is a dome type uh, deposits of the uh, 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 immunofluorescent deposits and uh, uh, this uh, usually is associated with sub epithelial immune complex deposition and uh, this disease is usually associated with gross hematuria it associated with hypertension usually in case if it occurs in children it uh, have a very bad prognosis and the children very quickly go in for the esrd or end stage renal disease uh, they sometimes present with the nephritic or nephrotic range of protein urea associated with gross hematuria and is present with the uh, renal involvement as far as the function is concerned with the raised urea and creatinine in the initial presentation itself now the other uh, the causes are called as secondary nephrotic syndrome which usually occur because of some other disease condition and uh, the commonest disease which are associated with nephrotic syndrome in children are hepatitis b and c disease it can be associated with hiv the bad malaria uh, syphilis especially your congenital syphilis or the contracted syphilis later on in the adolescent period it can be associated with drugs like nacids heroin or lithium it can be associated with malignancies like lymphoma especially remember hodgkins lymphoma can be associated with minimal change disease in children and leukemia it can also be associated with the autoimmune disease like your sle uh, or uh, c3 glomerulonephritis it can be present with diabetes mellitus it can occur as a congenital form which is called as congenital nephrotic syndrome or the finish type now these are the children who are present with the nephrotic syndrome either at birth or within 1 to 2 months in the infant uh, period itself less than 1 year of age again it carries a very grave prognosis nowadays we are seeing a lot of genetic mutations which lead on to this nephrotic syndrome uh the genetic mut mutations which are uh, commonly been implicated or mapped right now um uh, with the recent studies roc2 uh, cd2 uh, ap trp c6 wt1 act1 n4 uh, uh, this trna which is usually associated with leukemia or oq2 uh, which is again associated with uh, the autoimmune diseases so these are the secondary causes of nephrotic syndrome now it is important to look for these diseases and identify them 
this will help one in prognosticating in trying to understand that uh, these are the children who might not do very well and we have to you know uh, counsel the parents accordingly second these are the children uh, if they have the secondary type of nephrotic syndrome uh, you have to treat the primary day. now coming to uh, the uh, general uh, 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 presentations so as i said the presentation usually uh, is associated with proteinuria that is loss in the protein so there will be an edema there will be associated hypoalbuminemia now hypoalbuminemia is secondary to protein then the characteristic feature is gestational it develops the puffiness of the eyes especially over the face and the legs initially and then it spreads all over the body they develop what is called as generalized anasarca and this is a loss of albumin which occurs in the urine there's something called as an underfill theory and then we are talking more towards pertaining to the clinical feature and when we are talking about the overview this is outside the purview of this talk when we are talking about the clinical picture uh, we are talking about as i said edema now this edema starts as a focal edema usually uh, the bagginess of the eye, below the eyelids in the face but it very rapidly progresses all over the body now this is in contrast with post streptococcal glomerulonephritis where there is only after the um, either tonsillitis or any of the streptococcal infection the skin uh, 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 streptococcal infection the children do tend to develop little bit of facial edema and mild puffiness and pedal edema whereas in nephrotic syndrome you will see a generalized edema where the body is completely puffed up now this is usually associated with the uh, uh, the collection of fluid in the other body cavities like your pleural effusion and ascites they is associated with eyelid swelling and the eyelids they swell up and the child is unable to open the eyes Uh, the edema other characteristic feature is a very severe total or vulval edema the other uh, clinical picture that happens which is usually complained by the mothers is that the urine becomes very frothy dense or turbid so these are the things which is seen as a clinical feature in uh, uh, nephrotic syndrome now remember as the aftermath of this hypoalbuminemia and low circulating volume the child might present along with edema um, the features of shock where there is a low pulses or the child is having a low blood pressure but usually pediatric age group in the minimal change disease the children present only with edema and uh, no other features of shock the sh uh, the features of shock which are seen in the uh, children at the nephrotic range are your low thready pulses decrease in urine output uh, the child mentation can come down or the child might be having a feature shock where there is uh, the rapid breathing or a presence of a metabolic acidosis but that happens very rarely the other things that ha happen in the clinical uh, findings are hematuria the presence of hypertension the presence of rash or the the presence of any other infection which can occur like your hepatitis b c in hiv in the secondary causes so we have to look actively for that other thing is that we have to rule out the autoimmune process so in history in case there is associated uh, history which shows up uh, uh, the rashes or uh, joint pains or a joint swelling then we have to think about an sle or any other autoimmune process